four, five, six, seven, eight. So in essence, this number and this number is the exact same thing, believe it or not. One's binary, one's decimal. So step four is now done. Step five. Now this, you know, one through four is actually pretty straightforward, not too difficult. Step five is where students really start to kind of start scratching their head and they think, wait a minute, you know, you're starting to lose me here. But it's really not that bad because just look at what we have. We, we, we need to create 11 subnets or 11 networks. So we have to use, and you will always, by the way, this, this one formula that you see right here is the one formula that you're going to use in networks. This is it. 2 to the nth minus 2. So in this case, 2 to the nth minus 2 must give us a number that is greater than or equal to 11. So again, listen to what I just said. 2 to something, 2 to the power of something minus 2 must give us an answer that is greater than or equal to 11. It can be more than 11, it can be equal to 11, it just has to be those, it can't be less than. So this is where this little 2 to the nth chart over here on the side comes into play. So 2 to the what minus 2 will give us a number that is greater than 11 or equal to 11. Well, if we start here at 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 4th is 16. So 2 to the 4th is 16 minus 2 would give us 14, which is definitely a number that is greater than or equal to 11. We could also use 2 to the 5th because 2 to the 5th is 32. 32 minus 2 would be 30, which is another number that is greater than or equal to 11. Which one would be the best one to use? Well, it's really up to you. Um, this is telling us how many networks we're going to have. If we do 2 to the 4th minus 2, that's going to equal 14, which means if we need 11 right now, that gives us three networks to grow into. If we don't think that's going to be enough, if we expect our company to expand greatly over the next few years, we might want to take it to 2 to the 5th, which would then give us 30 networks to play with and a whole lot more room to grow. So in reality, it's whichever way you need to go. So for right now, we'll just stick with 2 to the 4th uh, minus 2 will give us 14. That satisfies our need. We need 11, we have 14. So again, all we did was just take this from our chart, 2 to the 4th minus 2 equals 14. Now. The way that subnetting works, uh, as far as the mathematical part goes, is in your subnet mask, the ones that you see down here in the subnet mask, ones always represent networks. Ones are networks. Zeros represent nodes or hosts. So what we're going to do, or what you have to do when you subnet, is you take some of these zeros and you lend those or you borrow those over to networks or change them to network bits. So in essence, we're going to take some of these zeros and we're going to make them ones. The key point though is how many. And how many is right here on the board and it is this number right here, your nth. In this case, it took 2 to the power of 4 to make the number that we needed over here to meet our quota or to meet our goal. So what we have to do is we have to take four zeros and we have to convert those to ones. Well, which four zeros? If you remember, I just said a little bit ago that in a subnet mask, it must start with binary ones and the ones must be continuous until they stop. So the four zeros we have to change is the first four zeros. So we're gonna change this from eight zeros to one, two, three, four ones and four zeros which means that this third octet in our subnet mask is no longer zero, it's something else. We have to figure out what it is. And this is where our binary calculator is gonna come into play. So we need to take this octet and take this and, and plot it in our calculator. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we will need to convert that from binary to decimal. Well. Remember from the other video, wherever you see a 1 in your binary calculator, that column is said to be turned on. So we take all of the columns that have a 1 in it and we add the numbers above them together. So in this case, we add 128 plus 64, which would give us 192, plus 32 would be 224, plus 16 would be 240. So this 
third number here, this third octet, or I should say our custom subnet mask is 255.255.240.0. We have now customized our subnet mask. And we did that by using our formula and taking some of the zeros in the subnet mask and making them ones. So step five is now complete. We have a custom subnet mask. Step six says determine the least significant bit. The least significant bit is the bit that's in this octet right here, which is still in our binary calculator. It is the bit in this octet, the smallest bit, I should, I need to say, the smallest bit in this octet that still has value. And in this case, if you look, the smallest bit we have is right here, and that is 16. So our least significant bit is 16. Now that number is extremely important because it is that number that tells us our first subnet and also our range of subnets. In other words, in this particular case, there will be a new subnet or a new piece of the pie, new piece of the pizza, that will start every 16 numbers. So if we look, I'm going to erase this up here. Let's say and let's show what subnet number one is going to look like. Subnet number one will be 172.16. Well, this is where our least significant bit is going to come into play. Our least significant bit was 16. Uh, you will place your least significant bit, or you will place, um, well, yeah, I guess I should say it like that. You'll place the least significant bit into the octet that you're messing with, or the octet that you changed. If you really look at it, we didn't do anything to the first, second, or fourth octet in this particular case. We've only messed with the third. So this is the octet that our number, we're going to plot that number into. So 172.16, in this case, it'll be .16.0 would actually be the beginning, or start off, our first subnet. And remember, this least significant bit also gives us a range, which means that every 16 numbers, it's going to start a new subnet. So in this case, what is 16 plus 16? Of course, it's 32. So the next subnet, or subnet number two, would be 172.16.32.0. And you would just keep going. What's 32 plus 16? Well, that'd be 48. That'd start the next one. What's 48 plus 16? 64. That would start the next one. In each one of these, if you remember the pizza that we talked about, remember we still have one corporate network. These things that you see here, all we're doing is we're making the slices. So between here and the number that we're going to talk about in just a second, these two, between these two numbers is one slice or one sub-network. Between this number and its end is another slice or another sub-network. So let's find out what the ending number is. So if 32 starts off the next one, what is the number that we could have that's right below 32? You know, what is the number right before 32? Well, it would be 172.16.31. 31 comes right before 32. Uh, and then what about this last number? What is the highest possible number we can have in, our, in any octet? Remember, the biggest number we can possibly have is 255. So what we have is this is the beginning, and this is the end of subnet number one. This is one piece of the pizza, one piece of the pie. Here, 172.16.32.0. Again, what is 32 plus 16? It would be 48. And 48 would start our next one. So what's the one right below that? Well, it'd be 172.16. 47.255. This is the beginning and the end of subnet number two. And again, you would just keep going. You know, 48 to 63, 64 to 79, 80 to 95, 96 to 111. You just keep going and keep going and keep going. And each one of these, again, if you remember the pizza, 
each one of these is a slice of that pizza. You have just taken one network, one network here, and you have just broken it down into multiple sub-networks using this custom subnet mask to make it happen. And again, I know that's a lot of information to take in at one point, but in reality, that's all there is to it. Uh, and again, I know that's easy for me to say. Um, I can tell you it took me four years to learn this stuff. Um, I'm not the smartest person you'll ever come across, but it took me a long time to learn this. Four years, like I said. Uh, it shouldn't take you that long to learn it because really and truly this is simplified as much as it possibly can be. So this is it. This is, uh, this is your subnet. Now, real quick before I close the video off, and I apologize for the length of this, like I said, it's going to be a little bit longer. I want to walk through one of those easy way of subnetting. Um, so let me erase this. And walk through one of those, those easier ones. Uh, in fact, I'll do the exact same one I had up here earlier. So we'll go to 172.16.0.0 slash 20. Now again, this number here, this slash 20, this tells me how many ones are in my subnet mask, in my custom subnet mask. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, period, because remember there's 8 bits per octet. Uh, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's my second octet. And then 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's 20 ones, which means, remember, there's 32 bits total in an IP address. So that means that the, there must be 12 zeros. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is our subnet mask. That's what that number represents. If we convert this back to a decimal, remember eight ones is 255 .255, and we still have our four ones and four zeros down here in our uh, calculator, and we said that was 240, and then of course dot zero here at the end. So we have the exact same subnet mask that we had before. It's identical, which means our least significant bit would also be the same as it was before, and the numbers that we had up on the board a minute ago would be the exact same. The only difference is, is instead of having to go through all these other things, all I really had to do was write this out, figure out what that least significant bit right there is, which of course was 16, and then I just simply start adding those numbers together because that's my subnet or that's my range. Um, you could do this with any class. You can do this with class A, class B, class C, um, and it works the exact same way. Don't let anything fool you. The same rules apply, the same everything applies. Uh, it does take, definitely take some practice, there's no doubt about it. You eventually need to get to the point to where you can do one of these things in about seven to ten seconds. And again, I know you gotta be thinking to yourself, there's no way I thought the same thing. Uh, many, many other students have thought the th same thing but it's not as hard as you think, it's just a little bit of practice. Um, you will start to notice patterns on your subnet mask. You'll start to notice, in fact, if you look down here, you see four ones and four zeros. That's a perfect pattern to notice. Uh, when you start noticing patterns and you can remember those things, it really will make things a whole lot quicker for you. And, and it won't take long at all for you to be able to get to the point to where you can just see the number, know what the subnet mask is, and because you've seen that subnet mask so many times, you're like, I know what the least significant bit is. It's 16 or it's 8 or it's 32 or, or whatever. Done, done, done. So this is the basics of subnetting. This is your first walkthrough of subnetting. And again, if you are not a subnetting master, don't freak out. Uh, I don't expect you to be. If you are a subnetting master, then I need to go ask my boss for a raise right now because I know this is not easy to do. So uh, just practice. Uh, I'll have more videos showing more practice but I wanted to walk you through this one first. Thank you so much and have a great day.